Hello everyone, welcome to Love Talk, time to communicate with James and Elena. Love is rarely about chocolates and flowers. In fact, we believe the foundation to a loving relationship starts with intelligent decisions. This intelligent foundation has been the reason for our success so far and is the core message of our program and weekly seminars. If things have been a bit bumpy in your love life, then don't despair. The Love Talk Show is here to point you in the direction of confident happiness. In today's topic, we are talking about where the love has to hurt. We hear again and again that when you're in love, this sometimes causes pain. This is exactly what we will be exploring today. The couple who will be with us today went through their fair share of pain, but have now learned to enjoy a relationship that is not tarnished by bad choices. Well, this young man sitting here next to me <laughs> hmm, used to sit at home when he was a teenager listening to love ballads like Love Hurts and mopping around because some girl didn't like him back. <laughs> Come on, who hasn't done that, right? Looking back now, of course I understand that this wasn't anything even remotely close to love. Instead, it was an infatuation that lasted a couple of weeks and then we would move on to the next person who didn't really care about us. The truth is that love is always a healthy part of our lives. If for some reason the love you are experiencing is not healthy and is causing you pain, then it is very likely that there may be something wrong with that relationship. We want to show you through this program today that love never comes with a side dish of pain. Instead, true love builds you up, brings you closer together with the person you love and multiplies your value many times over. This video will give you a better idea of how people commonly see pain as a normal thing in what is supposed to be a loving relationship. What? Come here. Get your hand off me. Come here. What? Where were you? No. I'm not talking to you. I'm Come not talking to you. Get your hand off me. Stop. Who was there? Get your hand off who me. Who was there? Tell me who was there. People, are, people are looking at us. People, 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 people are looking at us. Get your hand off me. Stop that. People are looking at us. People are looking at us. What's wrong with you? Okay, because someone will call the police if you carry on doing okay. that to someone. Okay. If, if I don't, someone else will. Okay. 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 It's perfectly fine. You don't have to put up with that, honey. Okay. Thank you. Well, Marcus is there. You're definitely right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I am. Just come up, okay? I'm Grant. Thanks. Yeah. What do I do? What? Do you ever listen to? Chrissy, stop. Oh, it's just you crazy. I've been talking at you for the last 10 minutes and you haven't listened. You haven't gotten into what I've been saying to you. But you're not even listening to me, that's what. Why do I push you like that? Because you respond to me about any of you all listen to me. You think you're fucking all manly. I wasn't. No, you can't be. No, you can't be. Don't try and walk away. Stop. 
Listen to me when I'm talking. Stop trying to f away from me! Stop this! What the f? What the f? There's nothing to Don't give me that okay? Pathetic. You're so pathetic. So you, you see that even though we're not really talking specifically about physical hurt, we can see there that people can purposely hurt each other, whether it's the man, whether it's the woman. And, and when that happens, uh, the respect for the other person goes out the window. It's very difficult for a relationship to recover from that. This is a very, very sad situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hate to see that, even on camera, let alone in real life. It's terrible. It Absolutely. really, you know, stains the person inside. I mean, it caused a lot of damage. Absolutely. Let's now touch on a few very important points to do with today's topic. Actually, some people accept it as normality to be emotionally and physically taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think? Do you really think people... Uh, because we hear a lot of people saying, you know, I didn't know I was being abused. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't know this was happening to me. And, and, and I hope that, you know, these people, they open their eyes and they stop, they, they come out of a yeah. situation like this because it's really damaging. But, but to be taken advantage of, for example, when someone takes advantage of you, what that person is doing is that, for example, we know that there are men who don't really like, who don't really love a woman, but they take advantage of the woman. They want to be with that person, even though they don't want to commit to them. They just want to feel good because they are with someone. Mm -hmm. In the same way, there are women who take advantage of a man because the man can offer security. You know, the woman also hurts the man deliberately, but still she keeps him around because that makes her feel some kind of security. So mm -hmm. uh, love doesn't take advantage. If, if someone, Absolutely. if you feel you're being taken advantage of, that's not love, that's hurt. Yeah, you should definitely question uh, your relationship and see, is this really what I want? Mm -hmm. Is this really right? Absolutely. Definitely. Another point is the ever so famous, famous love triangle, right? It's very normal for people to be torn between loving two different people, right? This is something that is constantly fed to us through movies. So when we say there that it's, it's very normal, it doesn't mean it's right. It's normal in the mm -hmm. sense that every, not every movie, but most movies you watch, soap operas, <laughs> you see uh, the woman likes the rich guy, but then she also likes, a guy, also likes a guy who's poor, but who's sensitive to her needs. Or sometimes the guy who likes the model, but also likes the wife and his torn. That's not love. It's not a healthy relationship. This is mm -hmm. another, another sign that there's something wrong with your relationship if you can call that a relationship. You need to question yourself again. I know that many people, they are like, they go about their lives thinking that it's all normal because this idea has like been imprinted into your mind through movies, like you said, through magazines, mm -hmm. through all these things, and it's seen as normal, but it's not normal. Absolutely. So if I were you, I would just leave this uh, relationship as soon as possible before mm -hmm. you get really seriously yeah. hurt. So if, if you subscribe to this idea of the love triangle, where, you know, you say, well, I'm love sick, I'm torn between two people that I love. You don't love any of them. <gasps> James, how can you say that? You don't, because you cannot love two people. You love one, and you love means you dedicate yourself to one. Mm -hmm. If you cannot dedicate yourself to one, you're trying to dedicate yourself to two people, it's not gonna work and you don't love, because love is that, it's sacrificing everything you are for that one person. So think about that. We're gonna to go to a break when we come back. There's two more points we wanted to talk about of comparing love and hurt, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now, another very important point is when people are cheated on by the person they love and they accept it as part of the other person's character. Now, we, I do hear that a lot as well, like, oh, you know, he's a very good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me talk about guy, you can talk about women. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he's a very good guy, but there's only this thing that, you know, he does, but he's, it's, you know, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
I don't think you should uh, accept such behavior. Absolutely. Honestly, I think you should not. I think you should respect yourself and, you, you know, uh, understand that you deserve better. I, I was watching this interview on uh, George Best. Probably everyone here has heard of George Best, you know, one of the greatest footballers that England has ever produced. And I think it was one of his former girlfriends or wives who said, you know, George Best was an amazing man. He was passionate, he was romantic, he was great, a great footballer, a great human being. His only downfall were the ladies. Apart from that, he was great. Mm -hmm. But then, that's not, that's not love, right? If the person cannot uh, commit to you and cannot give you their, all their attention, all their passion to that one person that is you, mm -hmm. then that's not love, that's, that's hurt. And, and, and love doesn't hurt. And you know something? I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like I'm criticizing, but people who say, oh, you know, he was an awesome human being and a very good person, but he had a problem with the ladies. Uh, these people are often hurt and so ashamed mm -hmm. of being cheated on that this is an excuse that they come up with. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy for you. I mean, it's, it's not happiness. Deep down Absolutely. you're hurt and you, yeah. you don't want that for yourself. So we, we want you to understand that in no way, shape or form does love, does love cause hurt. Love doesn't cause hurt. Love cause, causes happiness, causes the other person to feel more secure, better about themselves. These are uh, the outcome of love. Now it's time to get to know our guests with the love quiz and the three most annoying things about your partner. Hello and welcome to our weekly love quiz. And it's that time again where we test the guests' knowledge about each other. Now, today I have with me Priscilla and Miguel and we are just about to find out how well they know each other. The rules are very simple. I will ask you each five questions and you have 10 seconds to answer each one correctly. Now, let's begin with Priscilla, shall we? Priscilla, are you ready? Yes, How I am. How confident are you? Tell me. Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Anyway, cuteness aside, you have five questions and only 10 seconds each. All right, so let's begin with question number one. What's his, uh, what's his worst memory? 10 seconds on the clock. Mm, his worst memory? About dating and everything? No. A memory that he has in, in his life, something that happened to him that was really bad and... You already run out of time, you know that, yeah? I'm just giving you extra time here, but... <laughs> Priscilla, he said that the, his worst memory so far was an illness he had because he almost died and it was very painful, you know, physically speaking. So, wrong answer, but you still have four to go, so don't give up. Please try to focus. Question number two, ready? What kind of music does he like? He doesn't like music. <laughs> right answer. Hey. <laughs> I should have, I shouldn't have not um, asked you this question because it's obvious, isn't it? But never mind, you've got a point. Question number three, what's his worst thing to eat? Tell me, what doesn't he like to eat at all? He hates vegetables. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions right. You still have to, to go. Question number four. What item can he not live without? His iPad. Correct. <laughs> oh my God, this is so obvious. I should, have, I should have tested you so much. Anyway, fifth question. So three correct answers so far. Name three things and please remember Priscilla, you only have 10 seconds. And this is a long question. Name three things that you and your partner think you have in common. Hmm. 10 seconds. Our goals. Yes. Quick, quick. Our faith. No. Um, our... <laughs> I don't know. You ran out of time. I cannot count this one as correct, but you've got three correct answers. So that's quite good, actually. You know, we, we, we do have... We do get very bad scores here from time to time, you know? 
so don't worry. Now it's your turn, Miguel. Are you ready for this? I am. Bring it in. Are you going to do better than her? I'm for sure. Are you really sure about I this? Am. I, I have a feeling that you might not, but let's <laughs> prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Question number one, 10 seconds. What kind of movies does she like? Easy. Action movies. That's correct. <laughs> Guys, were you rehearsing these questions before I saw you? I no. hope not. <laughs> it is easy. Right. I pay the action. price of the movie because uh, she wants to practice with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so one, one score for you here. Question number two. What are you most likely to argue about? 10 seconds. The way I drive. No, she did not say that. Keep trying. Mm. The way I normally cut her when she's talking and I try to talk on top of her? No. <laughs> no more time for you to answer this one. She said you are quite messy at times. <laughs> so that gets you arguing, right? But anyway, question number three. What does she love the most about you? 10 seconds. She loves me. My eyes. <laughs> Perhaps, but she said something else. Keep trying, you only have 10 seconds. My courage? Not quite. Yeah, you run out of time. She said, and you probably know this, that she loves the way you dedicate yourself to your work, how dedicated you are. So you should know that, right? Yes. Question number four. What was her most difficult time in life so far? 10 seconds. Uh, one of the most difficult times was also similar to mine, that she didn't do right, was for concerning her health and that that's was right. really bad. That's right, well done. See Priscilla, I told you. <laughs> okay, two out of four so far. You've got a last one. Let's see if you can at least, Try. you know, yeah. Where did you go on your first date? 10 seconds. It was a shopping center in Sao Paulo. Ta -da! Correct answer. <laughs> and the scores are 3-3. Three, three. Well done to you both. Very, very good, actually. Well, now it's time for the three most annoying things about your partner. I try to organize like the shirts by with the colors, you know, beginning with the white, then light blue, <laughs> dark blue. And then he goes there, he changes everything. And I like to leave everything very organized, like with the sizes, the colors, <laughs> and he disorganizes everything. And also, like in the toilets, he leaves his mess, his hair everywhere. I don't, I don't like that. What is organized for me is a mess for her, but I hate when she touches my papers. I like to leave my things somewhere, and I want to go back there, and I want to find the way I left, because that's how I left organized. But when I arrive there, everything is in folders, in the drawer. Very nice, but disorganized for me. So I really don't like when she organized my stuff that I left there for me to use. Another thing is because I get car sick, and he likes to, you know, drive his car a bit fast. So he goes like, dun, dun. And I'm like, please, Miguel, 10 years saying the same thing, it's quite annoying. I would say something that really, really annoys me when she does is to try to control in me when I'm driving. You know, I really, really don't like when I'm driving to go somewhere and she complains I'm going too fast or I brake in a way that she doesn't like and that she's feeling sick. That is really, really annoying. Another thing about me, well, there's a lot of things, <laughs> but let me stop on the third one. The last one is when he cuts me, you know, when we try to have a conversation, he never allows me to end the conversation. He likes to cut me and then that really cut me off and then I get really annoy annoyed with that, so. She is a very caring person, but sometimes a caring person can be very annoying also. In which way? Sometimes I, I'm not hungry. And she says, do you want to eat something? And I say, no, I don't, I'm, I'm fine. One minute later, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, I don't want anything now. But I'm really sure it's tasting good. No, I don't want, but just try it. And when I think that is over after five minutes, there she comes again, but I already prepared for you, just try a little bit. That really makes me annoyed.
Welcome back. So we're sitting here uh, in our studio with Miguel and Priscilla. Thank you for being on the show, guys. Well, it's a pleasure, pleasure for us to be here tonight. So it was a draw, 3-3. Three, three. Yes. I, I, I won a little bit because she really <laughs> likes my green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, guys, you, you've been married for how long now? Ten years now. Ten years? Yes. How have those ten years been? Good. <laughs> there, was, there, there were moments where we had to uh, change ourselves, adapt ourselves, but generally, the best years of my life. Good. So, I mean, you, you guys have an interesting story because you, you started dating, you were in different countries. Tell us about that. Yes, um, I was, uh, and you can correct me if I say something, if I forgot something, please. I will. <laughs> um, I was here in England um, and she was in Philippines. But actually, our story started before that. Before I come to England, I saw her somewhere in Sao Paulo, where we came from, and I even kept some hopes of one day meeting her. But as I moved to England, those hopes were gone. Uh, I started working here, I put my love life a bit um, aside, and one year after, I had an opportunity to meet her. So we start talking, and after six months talking by phone only, I was a picture for her and she was a picture for me because the only thing we, we, she had seen of me was a picture and my voice. So after six months talking to each other, we had the opportunity to meet each other and spending time together, getting to know her and she mm -hmm. was getting to know me. And um, I fell in love with her from the moment that I started knowing her, even by phone. Hold on a second. When was the last time that you heard him say, oh, I fell in love with her. When was the last time you heard that? Maybe now Maybe in the show. Maybe this time? <laughs> that he's mentioned enough? Last time. Yeah. <laughs> Until we got married, maybe. <laughs> so how, how, what are the challenges of a, a long distance relationship, Priscilla? Um, honestly speaking, you know, we didn't, I didn't see challenges, my, you know, my, in the way. The thing was, in the beginning, my, my mom was the one who really helped because I didn't want any relationship at that time because before him, I tried to have three other relationships and it didn't work at all. I was disappointed in the three of them. Right. So it was a moment that I decided, okay, right now I don't want to think about, mm -hmm. you know, my love life, not now. So I was focused on my work and everything and I was okay. So my mom, heard about his desire to meet me and everything. And she was like, Priscilla, just as friends, just as friends, you know, he's the way you like. That's why he, he talks about his green eyes. Because she said, he got the green eyes that you like. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he's his smile, so cute. And I say, okay, but I, I'm not gonna marry his eyes. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna talk to him. And then she was insisting. And then I, I, we started with email, but I was very resistant. Mm -hmm. I was very like, okay, I'm not going to show anything that I like That's him. That's good, you know. <laughs> Isn't it? Good I wasn't you. easy. That's right. <laughs> and th I think that's why you got his attention. In a way, <laughs> when, 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 her mother, when her mother spoke to me and, and she said, in one week, call her. I called on the same day and she was not expecting. <laughs> I sweated so much. I had to put a fan in front of me because I was so nervous. Mm. I was very, I don't know why I was nervous, but you know, as he was speaking, I remember I wouldn't say a word. So he was very determined. Very, very, and very excited. He mm. talked like for an hour. And but the only thing. Let me ask you something. Let me put yeah. you right there. Does he still talk that much nowadays? Or? No. <laughs> it's just, just like, like what silence. I thought it was <laughs> when it comes to that. But carry on. It's true, it's true. But he was very talkative and, you know, but it was good because there, I, he would say, you know, he would talk about his goals and everything. And then I started to like the things he would tell me, mm -hmm. the kind of man he was, mature and everything, the ones that I was looking for. And that started to call my attention. So mm -hmm. we stayed for six months. You know, talking. talking, getting to know each other. Yeah, even though it was a long distance. Yeah. So you, you guys, um, you're very different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> very. <laughs> we we already know uh, that one of the things that annoys you about him is his driving. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Though well, I drive really good. Yeah, no, that's what he thinks. <laughs> really well. <laughs> he drives well, but the thing is, he's a, he likes to drive a bit fast. Mm -hmm. So that is like, you know, like, duh, duh. 
it break, accelerates and then he breaks. And that, I get car sick very easily since mm. I was a child. So for 10 years, I even, I, I told Helen one day, I'm very sick and tired of my own voice telling him the same things all over again. But, but I there's, have to say, there's, there's still hope. And, and you know, there's, <laughs> yeah, ten, after 10 years, there's still and hope. There's, more, there's a lot of years to come still, so I don't think you're oh gonna stop my. saying it. <laughs> what I wanted to find out from you guys, for example, is that you're, you're so different. Yeah. So I'm sure that in the beginning, you had problems adjusting, yeah. right? What were, like the biggest problems you went to, what would you guys argue about? Well, I would say that, as she was mentioning, I was very uh, talkative when I was getting to know her. But I know that everything that I was doing there, I was being myself, I was expressing myself, I had to allow her to know me and everything. But one of my characteristics is also to be very, um, can be very reserving. I was making an effort to talk a lot mm -hmm. so that she could get to know me. But the way that I am, I'm much more of doing than of saying. Mm -hmm. So of course, if the only relationship I had with her was by phone, imagine if I didn't talk. You How could I have a relationship <laughs> yeah. with her? So I had to Good talk point. a lot. It was the only way to express myself. But after we got married, I saw myself relaxing on the way I, I spoke to her. So and prob probably the word is not relaxing, slacking off. Yeah. yeah. You weren't, you know, putting the effort you would put in before. That's right. To, to exactly. talk. In other words, she knows who I am now, so I don't need to be talking much. I need to do more than, than, mm -hmm. than talking. And that was hard for her. Because what one of the things that called her attention about me was the easy way, because she's a very shy, uh, shy in the way she speaks. She was looking at me as the opposite of her. Like, mm -hmm. I, want, I want to be able to, to express myself like that. But she found out later that I was just like her on the way that mm -hmm. I was expressing myself. And this created big problems because mm -hmm. I, for me, I was showing love for her by caring for her. Mm -hmm. But for her, I didn't love her because mm -hmm. I was no longer saying the things that I used to say but before. Did you ever say that, that he did, oh, you don't love me because yes, you don't talk? Yes, I thought that in the beginning, because that's how he mm. was saying. I grew up in a family, for example, that I was very, you know, they care, they loved me. My mom would wake up, she would <laughs> wake mom. me up singing songs, like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> really? Yeah. For me, it was a bit annoying sometimes, like, oh, mom, please. But, you know, that's how mm. I grew up. And I, I would see my dad singing. Oh my mom, the big shoes to film. Big shoes to film. Yeah, well, like very high standards. <laughs> and she was expecting me to do the same. So she would expect you no. to, even though you don't play the guitar. Imagine she me you waking her up singing a song. No. I hate the music. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> he was very romantic in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You actually, I'm gonna tell the whole world now <laughs> what he used to do when we used to date. He used to sing in my ears when we were in the tube station. And I hate the music. And he hates singing. <laughs> he danced with me when we were dating once. Really? Yeah, but after I got married, no, no singing, no dancing, nothing. No, no, this was before. Now I, I have No, he's you. a provider, right? <laughs> yeah. I provide for my wife and this is love. Just like in the... In, you know, like years and years and mm. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> caveman, caveman, that's what I wanted to, yeah, to remember. It was kind, kind of love. hard it's for love. me to understand it, the way he was showing his love. Mm. You know, I wanted to see my way. That's why in the beginning we used to have problems with, you know, he doesn't love me anymore. Why he changed so much, you know. He's so, he's very like, focused in his work, 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 and what about me? So in the beginning we had these issues, you know. Well, we can easily conclude that it's all your mother's fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's the conclusion and we get here, because who sings to people when they're Isn't it? Well, <laughs> let, let me very ask you, cute. Let me ask you something. You, did you get to the point of, of saying that he didn't love you anymore? Or you yeah. don't love me? You said that? Yeah, I told really? you that, yeah. And the way that I react concerning that was the wrong way. In the beginning, I thought that, okay, I know how to be tough. And in my mind, because the way I was taught from childhood, I, I believed that the way to teach her not to be emotional was being tough on her. So as more attention she wants, less attention I'm gonna give. Oh, that's evil. So in my mind, in my mind, I was helping her mm -hmm. not to be emotional anymore. Mm -hmm. But the truth was, was getting even worse. Yeah. And actually, today we're talking about 
the fact that love doesn't hurt, mm -hmm. right? And without noticing, you were hurting each other, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes we have couples who come on the show and say, no, no, we never argued, we never had any problems, which I doubt, everyone has issues, mm -hmm. right? But without knowing, you were causing pain because you had really high standards in terms of what you lived with as you were growing up, and then you had completely different standards. You, mm -hmm. you had to be tough, so it's like fire and water. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe one day you woke up and you thought, I'm gonna show her, I'm gonna make turn her into a man. No feelings, yeah. you know? That was, that was the problem. That. It doesn't work, and you see? Another thing that it was my fault again, the way that I used to do a lot with her. She would complain to me, that, that's how it is, that's how I feel, that's how I believe it should be. And I would always say the same sentence. But I don't see this way. Mm. So it had to be my way. I don't see this way. But can't you see that this, if we do this, it's going to change? And I was the one saying, but I don't see this way. So anything she would tell you, you would, you would yeah. just disregard I would not it. consider what she would say. I wanted to solve the problems. Mm. So I, I would try to have conversations with him and everything. But he would come and he was like, okay, but I, I don't see that. For example, Miguel, you know, it's not good. You do this sometimes. And, but I, I was very open for him to speak about me as well. Mm -hmm. But whenever I would point something on him, he was like, no, don't say this way. No, it, no, it's not like that. <laughs> Never. He, was, he would see what I was seeing. So it was very hard. Okay, guys, we, ha we have to go for a break. But when we come back, you're going to tell us how you changed that. Okay. Right? Because uh, the good thing is that this hurt that uh -huh. used to happen sometimes was not deliberate. Mm -hmm. You weren't deliberately trying to cause pain to each other. It, yeah. It's You just didn't know how to deal with yeah. that situation. But we want to know how you solve the problem. So we have to go to, to a break. We're going to be back in just a few moments. Welcome back. Uh, so Priscilla, tell me something. How did you feel every time he would disregard your opinions mm -hmm. or whatever you would say, listen, we have to address this in our relationship? How, how did that make you feel? You know, Helena, to be honest, I, I felt quite frustrated, you know, because I, I would think, okay, if he doesn't see it, how there will be a change in him? Mm -hmm. So I, I was quite concerned about that because I was, as I said, I was very open to see, look, okay, tell me, if there's anything I'm not seeing or it's not pleasing you and you want me to change, so tell me because I'm going to work on that. Mm -hmm. But you know, in his case, he would never see, so there was no point, <laughs> so it was like, okay, am I the one that's problematic here, <laughs> that sees things that doesn't exist? So, so how did you guys resolve this issue? It was actually her, um, her action that really helped me. Because I would not see it as a problem. That's what I used to see my parents. My parents were not really um, caring for each other. My so father they wouldn't would sing to each other never. in the morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So my father would travel from Monday to Saturday. I would see him only on Sundays. And whenever he would come back, I would never see him caring for my mother. That, so I had an idea about, about, though I had good examples around mm -hmm. me, but I had an idea in my mind that I was fine. There was no problem in being like that. Until the day that she came to me and she, she sat down and she said, it can't work like that. It's not working and it cannot, can't you see? I remember when she said, can't you see that if we change, mm. we are gonna progress in everything that we do. Can't you see that Their we could be doing much better? Right yes, it was. So, <laughs> it challenged she you. Made, yeah. She made me think. Uh, on that day that what I was doing was okay for me. I was trying to change her in my way, but the way I was trying to change her was totally wrong. Well, you were trying to change her because you didn't like what she said years ago. That right? is right. <laughs> but because it, the, the truth was I, was, I was seeing her as a problem. Right. Because for me it was okay. And you, actually Miguel, for example, what you said now, that's the case with most men. Most men say, for me, it's okay. Mm -hmm. She's the problem. Actually, uh, the vast majority of, of people who go and seek help from marriage counselors are women. Because a man usually doesn't see any problem. But the interesting thing, like we said before, is that you, you didn't deliberately hurt each other. It was something that when she 
help to make you think, see the problem, then you were able to, what, what did you change? What did you have to do to, to fix that? The first thing I had to listen more to her. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that giving her more credit and I could see immediately the difference. From the moment I started considering what she was saying, even Priscilla as a wife got much better for me, mm -hmm. improving much more, becoming more confident because I know that I have destroyed her self-esteem completely by never giving credit That's for That's a very her. strong word, destroyed. <laughs> or, no, but, but, it, but it's true. That's yeah. what I By, by the way, it is. I have really damaged her, mm -hmm. her confidence by the way I was treating her. But for example, it's, it's like we were saying, it's not like you deliberately did that. No, no. no. But for by, me, it was okay. Yeah, but it's like by disregarding what she was saying, yeah. she would feel what's the point of speaking, what's the point of, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. But you see, you see something interesting here. Well, yeah, I'm listening to you guys telling your story and you both had different upbringings. Mm. And this plays a big role on mm. your relationship today. Yeah. And this is what happens. Two people get together with different, completely different backgrounds, like we have, very mm -hmm. different, right? Your mom, I don't know if she used to sing to you, but something similar. <laughs> she never sang. She, she, would do, she would do everything for well, her, you. you know, her son, you know? Yeah. Son is something special. And my parents, like, all right then, you know, you go and, all right, very independent. Yeah. So we didn't have, so when we got together, we also had a little bit of a, you know? Yeah. Clash. You know, a clash and thunder and, you know, <laughs> you name it. But this is interesting. It's yeah. important to understand. Perhaps people watching us now can maybe look at themselves and say, oh, maybe this is why we don't get along. I need to go back and, oh, understand my partner better because of his upbringing and, and understand why he behaves the way he does. Mm -hmm. So it is not deliberate, but... So the moment you started... Working, considering, listening to what she mm. was saying, even like her confidence and all these things started to, to change, right? Yes, it changed not only myself, I saw changes in her. She has never, ever been um, a problem or a bad wife. She has never stopped caring for me or doing the things that she had to do. But I knew, I saw, I could identify that I was not making her happy. And because of that, I was delaying my own happiness in my marriage. Mm -hmm. So when I started listening more to her, giving more attention, indeed, as she said, I was about work, 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 work. And if she was not at work with me or involved in what I was doing, I would despise, uh, tell her, look, you have to come and be with me. Mm -hmm. I could understand that it was not all about that. I was actually exchanging the orders. I was putting the work that I do bef uh, before her. Before your marriage. And that, that was a huge problem for me. How, how was it, Priscilla? The moment he started listening to you and, and you know, paying more attention to you, how, how was that? No, it was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> not just... <laughs> tell us more, tell us more. <laughs> it was not a bad, listen, because, as I was saying, if you listen, you, there's he, a huge chance that you're going to He was resisting. He was resisting. Very, yeah, very much. But then he, he started, he stopped resisting and he started to, you know, to listen and do the changes. Like I remember the, the pastor who, who did our, 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 our wedding, he said something that called my attention. He, he looked at him and that's exactly what happened to us and said, Miguel, you need to see Priscilla as your investment. If you invest on her well, you're going to have everything you want. <laughs> and it's true, isn't, isn't it? it? You need to invest, you're going to have a lot wife of profits. A happy wife is a happy home. <laughs> it's true, definitely. And then I believe that it, it helped a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And, and actually, Miguel, what, what you said, not many men usually say, because you said, look, you know, I, was, I wasn't um, paying attention to her as I should, I wasn't treating her as I should. Not like we said again, because we don't want people at home to think that you deliberately yeah. treated her. It wasn't no. that, that wasn't the case. It's just that you had one frame of mind, she had a completely different frame of mind. The moment you started to take on board what she said, then your marriage really changed. Mm -hmm. how, how, is, how is the marriage now that you no longer have those conflicts and those little things that happened before? It's really nice. I'm not gonna, if I say, no, it's okay, then no. it's always okay for me. It's good, I mean, it's good because, okay, even though he changed, but I had to change as well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I was just asking, you know, you have to change or you need to see it. I searched as well in me things that I needed to improve. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this kind of helped him to start to listen to me 
you know, more and, and you know, give ears to what I was saying because I believe it's something mutual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both of us, we have to, to do that. Exactly. It's not only him or only me. If both of us, we are working to change, to make our, our marriage work, be better, oh, it's going to be amazing. Even though there may be struggles or whatever, we're going to overcome, we're going to... But you see, it's very interesting. Um, usually men, they think, they, they see it as a weakness to to consider what their wives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is something that we also kind of changed, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not a weakness. It's an intelligent exactly. thing to do. Not, we are not always right. Yeah. We are many times wrong, but because we, we tend to be very emotional. But when they listen, it helps, right? Mm -hmm. and that, let's team up here, Priscilla. Let's, yes. you know? that, that is what makes me value her. <laughs> even more today because mm -hmm. when I look back in everything that the decisions that I made thinking were, were right but they were wrong and now I can see it makes me value her even more because mm -hmm. she was strong I was thinking she was weak mm -hmm. by the way she was but actually to be able to take the way I, me the way I was <laughs> she, she was, was really strong, strong. <laughs> mm -hmm. the way that, that I was dealing with her the way that she went through the challenges <laughs> and overcame, it makes me value her even more. Mm -hmm. And no doubt, if I would go back 10 years now, I would not, I would not choose a different person, it would for sure be her. But you would do things differently. Differently. <laughs> to, wow, we deserve a medal. Her happy. Yeah. Yeah. This girl deserves you know, Priscilla, a medal. You, sh you, should, you, should give him, Priscilla, you should give him a prize. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I deserve a medal, I should give him a prize. <laughs> you deserve a medal, but you should give him a prize because yeah. you said, look, you know, it's true. He's cheering for the man, right? Because he's a man. And um, you? Yeah. But actually, it's, it's teamwork. You yeah, guys exactly. Teamwork. That's the word. So guys, thank you so much for being on, on the show. Oh, We've been trying to get you on the show for a while. <laughs> for a long it. time. But finally... It was the best here. moment to come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So There's always a good time. And I think something we learned now, Lena, that mm. we, we probably didn't consider when we started this, this show, today is that when we talk about love causing pain or love hurting, is that there is such a thing as the kind of hurt that is not intentional. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, you, you hurt someone because you want to and that's wrong. But a lot of times, and probably I did that, and maybe you did that without noticing, we, sometimes you hurt the other person without noticing. And, and that's why you have to have a positive mind to see that sometimes the person says something that hurts you, but they didn't do it on purpose. And if they didn't do it on purpose, the best thing is to forgive and move on. And this is very typical of lack of communication. Mm -hmm. It's that wrong way of thinking, you know? I am right, she's not right, or I don't want to listen to you, to your opinion. I made up my mind, and it, it, this all happens inside your head. You don't mm -hmm. really talk about how you feel and why you think that way or why you are acting that way, and then you are making each other, you know, yeah. suffer and, and hurt. So you know? I want to draw your attention to the things we already mentioned here earlier. The love triangle, you know, that doesn't exist. That kind of hurt, that's not love. All the other things we mentioned. But something that this couple helped us to understand today is that be careful because sometimes there is uh, unintentional hurt and that perhaps happens throughout the whole marriage because you can be married for 30 years and then the person says something and unintentionally hurts you. And if that's the case, be humble enough, be big enough to just forgive and move on. Sometimes that is the best policy, okay? It's been a pleasure to have you here with us. Until next time, have a wonderful evening.